It took one week to get out of practice. Uh, that's all we need. We don't need much. It took Casey, one week. One week to get out of practice. <laughs> I think that um, we could do, we could stay absolutely on track and still be out of practice. I mean, that's true. That's yeah. true. Uh, it, it's maybe because we don't see it as practice. And if we did, we'd get better. <laughs> you know, if we just <laughs> simply looked at this like a muscle, like anything else that no. you can flex and build. Uh-huh. Instead of just, uh, I don't know, just keep slather it on the same grade C quality. Hey, they come back for it. Hey, <laughs> you're, you're, we're doing that thing again. It's your fault that you're here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Before we roll in, I just, I need to talk to you real quick. Just real, we need uh, two minutes because we're on a tight schedule today, but like, I just want to talk to you freshly about about the first 10 minutes of the pumpkin carving video. No. I got to tell you, I haven't watched it yet. I haven't watched it yet. I opened it because I, my phone was, listen to me, my phone was dead. And when I, when it came back to life, I had a text from you that said, check, uh, check email or something oh my god and i knew immediately i was like rocco and laser there's progress i know that's god, what dude. this means so i opened it i've up. watched it six times i opened it up i watched about a maybe a minute maybe a little less and i was laughing so hard but i was exhausted like i was in bed and i was laughing so dude. hard that i was crying like tears streaming yeah. and and i i like it made me black out i think Cause I was laughing and then I it, just like yeah. ceremoniously put my phone down and immediately went to sleep. It knocked me out. Good. You went to sleep on some giggle endorphins, which is I nice. Did. I was up late last night on some antihistamines because of said oh. hand. Cause I got stung by a goddamn wasp. And mm-hmm. y- y- so I just couldn't really, and, and it's weird. Cause like I've been t- having to take Benadryl for the past like four days every night just to ch- keep it and luckily this one wasn't as bad as my foot but like to just kind of keep it from getting out of control and Benadryl makes me so weird but like this night for some reason it amped me up and it didn't make me sleepy so I was just sitting up oh. and then I got a message from Eldritch Kitchen you know for at like 9 30 p.m and I was like oh <laughs> fuck and he was like just wanted to send some progress here's like the first 10 minutes and I watched it and then I watched it again and then I think I watched it again like and then sent it to you and then i watched it again because the the second half dude like when it's so fucking funny it's so funny like when we are both on the porch and like the banter the uncomfortable banter starts and he's making this weird villain out of only one specific teapot and it is killing me (sighs) I think that's part of the reason that I knew I couldn't commit to the whole to the whole thing right at that moment is because I know what's coming. And and I got to the part where oh in in reality, Laser has these two pumpkins. And I, I thought when in filming, I thought it would be funny if for just half a second he kind of caressed the the pumpkins a la breast. It gets drug out for so long. He and the thing is, I only did that for like a few a cup a couple of seconds. But the way that he edited it. He like reversed it and then played it back and then reversed. It made it seem like I was rubbing those pumpkins for like five minutes. And it's the forever. That's the part that that absolutely made my brain just shut off. It's like, I can't. Not right now. <laughs> I can't take this. I must sleep. Oh. Okay. Well, I, well. It made me it made me more awake. So um Good. so enjoy. Good enjoy it uh, I, I need to hear from you soon i need you to watch it immediately upon mm-hmm. finishing this recording and i need to talk to you about it because no one else in the world has seen this but me and eldridge <laughs> kitchen and i i need i need you before we go any further in, in even a hot second further we've got to dedicate this episode to our lovely pet trump artisan pie which adorable ah Cutie. And if you don't do bye bye uh, Miss Artisan Pie, I'm gonna be mad. Well, I think you have to now because it's your suggestion. But the singing that's not my gig. You don't want me to I can hear your throat tightening. I miss a, can you? <laughs> yes. I have this strange phenomenon that happens anytime I think about singing where other people can hear me. I absolutely, my windpipe closes to the size of a dime. (laughs)
That's pretty normal. Mine used to do that when I uh, back when I was like forced to sing in public at like 14 and I just couldn't I couldn't make that decision anymore. But yeah, I remember the first few times I sang in public, it didn't work. It just didn't work. It sounded awful because my throat just would not eke noise out right. It doesn't it, 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 I don't know why. I don't know why the brain goes, "Stop it, you're vulnerable." And like tells me to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shame. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be embarrassed. Uh, what are we talking about today? <laughs> so I, uh, very much like you recently had, I have a fluid topic today. Um, <gasps> it, it is not like a set thing. I, I'm talking about believing in your own spell work today because I've recently had an experience where spell work was done and in such a bizarrely cosmic way, exactly mm -hmm. how it was supposed to, it enacted the change it needed to enact. And like a way that's so perfect and so strange that you're just like, okay. So you're, you had one of those moments, those, um, those like, oh shit, this is real moments. Yes. Yeah. 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 Big time. And and, uh, and, and luckily, like, it's like good news about Bruce, you know, it's like, I, I want to mm -hmm. talk about, it's the conclusion of the Bruce situation uh, uh. in such a way that is so, it, I, I, it really just like floored me. And it kind of, I think it, it, you know, every now and again, I'll do something that Hunter even is like, yeah, you, okay, you said, yeah. you said that was going to happen, you know, and like, I'll sometimes <laughs> say things out loud to him as a yeah. marker, be like something's going to happen this week, you know, X, Y, Z. And it's yeah. like, it, you know, it was, it was one of those moments following spell work and following feeling the shift, the spell work enacted in the universe that it's just those moments, you know, like, Oh, we're, yeah. we're about to like board this train. Like something's about to happen. Here. I have, I have reached in and manipulated. Yeah. The fabric the, of reality. Yes. <laughs> so um, good. that's, yeah, that's what I want to talk about. And, and I'm really, really excited about it. Uh, and, it's given me a little bit. It's helped kind of pulled me up uh, a little bit. Of course, like I've been pretty you depressed lift about this. Me up. Yep. You raise me, yeah. and I I've needed it, you know, truly, because I've been down. I've been really bummed about this whole situation. Like with the stress of needing to resolve, it was like. <sighs> It was kind of like devouring my own tail, you know, it was like in this yeah. pursuit of this journey, I was having to also separate myself from this animal and it was really bumming me out. And so I, you know, it's just been a whole thing The the energy in the house is tense because it's just been full of conflict energy. And I'm not used to my house, which is like this space that I can. Yeah, like seriously, we work in tandem with each other and my space is never a place that when I walk into it, I tense. It's the opposite. It's the only place in the world that I don't do that at. But like it had gotten to the point to where I had run up to mom's house at one point just to visit with her and I realized I felt the feeling leave yeah. and then it came back when I walked into my house. Mm -hmm. and I was just like, I, this is, but I was like, I can't do like a deep full cleansing to all like call everybody. I'm not going to do that until this is resolved because that's, it just, it wasn't right. That wasn't it's, right. Yeah. Like. And, and it's almost like in that situation, it's one of those where you're like, I don't know if I have the energy to spare to do that right now. I didn't yeah. at all. You know, like I was putting everything I had in trying to resolve this and get him somewhere that he needed to be. And I am very happy to say that he has been rehomed and he mm -hmm. has been rehomed to the most cosmically perfect place. Great. That it's unbelievable. It's comedic. Honestly, I'm really how excited silly to, it is uh, to hear about it. I haven't heard that much about it. We've passingly kind of kept in touch, and you know, I've been like, "Hey, you know, what's up with Bruce?" Are you like, "Hey, this is what's going on?" But I'm I'm excited to hear the full tale, um, the the whole tale. Get it, dogs' tales. Oh, um, ah. but uh, I also want to say, just dude, I I'm digging these like conversational esque topics that we I am too. Mm -hmm. Um, th there is a part of me that has felt in the past as if it is some kind of let down, you know, that it's like, Oh, I don't have like a research topic, you know? And, it, and it's, I, I don't know how to phrase it, but there is a strange feeling of like, Oh crap, I have to do one of these. And like, it's not going to be as good or like, I don't know, whatever. There's, there's a feeling that comes with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. However, they're usually they're like, they're well received. And I think, I think that they're enjoyable. Um, and while it's not necessarily a straight up like article of witchcraft that we're talking about, I think they are important topics and I think we should do them 
maybe a little more. I think we should. Well, and it signals growth yeah. as well. I, I, I mean, it takes us being able to say we are confident enough to approach this topic without the buffer of somebody else, you know, like, cause we're using other information and sources. It's like, this is straight from us, yes. you know, like, so we, are we valid enough? And I think we are, you know, because it's just if it draws from personal experience. Dude, are we val- like, can you imagine if this was it, like, if we tried to do this in the early days, like episode two, what if we were just like, talk about believing in your spell work? Oh my God. I, I couldn't even, I like, I, I know. And it's so amazing that we started this show at that. I mean, it's like, I don't think people understand sometimes. Well, I'm, I'm sure you do. If you, if you listen, if you like listen oh, to us yeah. now and listen back then, we knew nothing, oh, like no. literally nothing. No, no, no. Like, we had talked about like, Hey, crystals are pretty. And I think there might be other practitioners in the area. Like that, that was it. Yeah, I mean, like, literally anything you could gather from, like, a TJ Maxx home goods section. Like, right. that's what we yeah. knew. We you were know, the seriously. demographic that would probably go for those, like, pre-put together, you know, white sage For kits, sure. You know. Absolutely. And, and you know? We, were, we were the time. And, and even listening back to those early episodes, the amount of times that we just, like, slung around, like, like, say, like smudging. You know what I mean? Um, I know. It, it, it. it you know, and we've, we've said this is nothing new. We've said this a hundred times. It is a little pain, a little cringe to listen to, because knowing what we know now. But just to reiterate, how dick we knew about shit. Oh, nothing. We knew nothing, and we, you know, and it's it's we've talked about it before. Like it is through that that this show exists. Mm-hmm. It's it's like the show is built on our flaws, and there's something kind of beautiful about that. You know, yeah. like in its own way, like you can see the growth in that. And without it, without that kind of bum rush attitude that we did with this show it wouldn't be here you know and i you know not to not to i always have a problem kind of tooting our own horns or like speaking in a way that's not self-deprecating or whatever but like i really do think that that's part of the reason that we have you guys that are listening to us right now with your ear holes you know is that there's a sense of re- uh, relatability there, I yeah. think, you know, especially if um, you were not like raised in any kind of tradition or culture yeah. that that has anything or any background with this, you know, and, and you're just kind of finding it because you passed an earthbound and went, huh, there's a book that says witchcraft. Should I buy it? You know? Um, right. So, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, and. So anyway, that, you know, I, it's funny to think about. It is funny to think about, mm. like, doing that, uh, this topic. And I wouldn't because I was not doing this level of confident, yeah, intense. <laughs> this was this was spell work that while I wasn't, you know, I've done more intense prep. Like, again, I've mentioned my cleansings. Like, those are very serious. I call in ancients when that happens. I didn't do that with this. I did leave offering out if anybody wanted to help, but it was just kind of like a more, this was like me alone doing this, like a soul manipulator. And it, it it was different because a lot of the times I do, I like a long game spell. That's usually the work that I do. I like your energy. I like to, and it's, to me, it's always worked. It's that steady climb, but this was different. Like this was something that needed to be potent. It needed to be quick mm-hmm. because tensions are just getting worse. You know, it was like, I need a resolution here. What did you and, do for your, your, uh, your ex, your catalyst? Well, I, uh, and if you don't say cinnamon, things. I'm going to reach through the computer and grab your throat. I didn't. Um, I, you, I believe I used chili. I usually use chili yeah, instead of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, instead of cinnamon. Uh, but I, I also use, so I, this was like every, basically my set spell work. Like I will do bigger, fluffier stuff around it. But if I'm doing a spell, there's going to be a dressed candle with herbs and also mm-hmm. that same herb incense blend on a disc burning at the yeah. same time. Yeah. That's, that's like my set. If I'm rolling up my sleeves and it's like, that's my bread and butter. That's the core basis of almost all spell work that I do. I might add runes to it. Yeah. I might add like vegetables and whatnot. Like I've like on Patreon, I did the spell with the chili peppers all around it. Yes. Like the light of fire. I'll do things like that. But it's like at the core, there's that candle. There's that incense blend. Let me ask you, what do you do, um, <clears throat> say with the, the vegetable, the fruit, the chili, whatever you're, you're doing in that regard, what do you do with that after you have done your spell do you kind of leave it there with the candle burning or do you like reclaim it and cook it and eat it to like consume the powers or do you leave it out for the woods like what do you do yes, after i leave it out 
Okay. I, um, once the candle's done, I'll usually leave the space there for a while. Like once the candles burn down and whatnot, yeah. maybe like for the rest of the day, yeah, I'll leave it there. Mm -hmm. And then usually I'll, I'll take it out to the woods. Yeah. That's typically what I do. Uh, unless I feel like there is something to be, if I went into it knowing that I was going to then consume whatever food or whatever was left out because it was like uh infused with the energy that I was blah 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 you know where I'm, you know how it goes right like, yeah. then I'll then I'll consume it but most of the time it is like I've I've buried it before and I've left it out for you know animals to get um maybe that's not correct now that I'm thinking about it <laughs> but mm -hmm. like um I yeah I will leave it out uh just wanted to know that always interests me like what people do with their stuff yeah you know, after it's done, what do you do with your wax drippings? What do you do with X, Y, Z? And, um, right. Yeah. Just interesting. Yeah. I, well, and this one wasn't very flashy compared to most, you know, mm -hmm. I, I believe, and you know, here's the thing. It's I, my memories of spell work are always very different. They're always slippery. They're yeah. hard to pin down. It almost seems like everything has tracers mm -hmm. attached to it. It's always very difficult for me to remember. And so I, it's like, I believe I had added, uh, Othala to mm -hmm. this because it's like the, you know the rune of home and like and whatnot. And so it was like that just felt right. Uh, the candle I dressed with uh, a Hecate oil blend, which I really debated on for a good long minute because like Hecate is not you know like she there's a lot of devotion that goes into that and yeah. honoring and knowledge. Yeah. But it was just like it. My gut told me it was the right thing to do. She helped in the Jora situation. Well, she, dogs and, are kind of her thing, you know. Yeah, and he's he's a he's black, you know, and and wayward. He it just felt right. It felt like you know I kind of yeah. held it for a while, and it was like this is the move. And so I put it on there, and I dressed it with this herb blend. And I can't tell you exactly what all was in it for sure, but there was like oh, uh, penny royal, catnip, lavender, rose. Uh, it was a bunch of herbs to inspire friendship and love, uh, but also just like attention and attraction. Mm. Because I was thinking, because this is the situation that I'm dealing with, with, and I talked about it briefly on the other episode, is that there's no room anywhere. Yeah. There's nowhere for it's Texas right now, <clears throat> and just a large part of the South in general. I mean, it always struggles with an overage of dogs, mm -hmm. but like right now, something is going on to where it's 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 like an issue. It's a yeah. serious problem. And so nobody had any room. And it was just like, I was just getting, at this point I did this spell. I was just getting like rejection after rejection after yeah. rejection from rescues. And it was like, I wasn't going to take him to a shelter. Like I knew that that wasn't, that wasn't even on the table, Yeah, not anything against shelters, but it's like, it would break him. Yeah, not yeah, going to yeah. happen. And so I had gotten, I had heard back though, finally at the point of the spell, I had heard back that one of these organizations was like, well, we don't have room but we will do, we will put him up on our site for you. Okay. And, you know, we will do the home visit with them. Like basically we're mostly out of it still, but we will do the application. We'll, we'll, we'll like scan through those, send you the good ones and we'll do the home visit. And they were like, w you just have to keep him. And I was like, fucking bet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, it's fact, seriously that's probably ideal thing. for you anyway, would be to keep him at your home until he had somewhere to call a home versus that kind of liminal state of being like at a housed, I don't want to call it a shelter, but like housed at a rescue kind of halfway point, you know? Yeah. I think it was better for him emotionally yeah. for sure. Yeah. And so this is like at, at that point was when I did the spell, I didn't know anything other than that. The post wasn't even up yet. Mm. Uh, I don't think. And so I was like, I'm doing this. Like this is, we've got good news. And I was like riding on the high of the first true bit of good news that I'd had in like three weeks, yeah. you know? And I was like, <laughs> bet. Grab the candy. It was all very impromptu. Grabbed everything, put it all together. And so I was like, I need to be smart here though, because like, it's not the fact that I need to find it. They just need to have room, you know, like it, th this isn't a room situation. I need the right pair of eyes to mm -hmm. find him in this overage, this sea of other dogs that need help. And so I was like, that's my move. That's my in is focusing on the vision, focusing yeah. on bringing these two, like these eyes to his listing that wasn't even up yet, but I knew it would be. And so <clears throat> 
that was why I gathered herbs for that, like one catnip. like friendship and whatnot. And the catnip was just also, this was still very intense. It's emotional for Bruce, emotional for me. And so it was just like, that was in there. Uh, I believe fever few was in there as for like safe journey. You know, you can put it in your shoes as like a safe travel thing. So I just put everything in there, but then yeah, other stuff to inspire love, like the rose and, and whatnot to be like, these eyes need to find him for a reason. Like these, yeah. these two, they belong together, you know? And so I, I dressed the candle. It was all good to go. I had the the herbs going on the disc, probably like, I don't know, like fucking dead can dance was playing, on, <laughs> you know, like, and it was, it was feeling right, you know, and I did what I do and scried, you know, just kind of stayed with the flame and, sh- you know, shot my energy into it mm-hmm. and did what you do in, in that. And, and then there was a moment and it always happens in the spells that, you know, because I, I mean, admittedly, and I think it's that way for everybody, like, typically, I only like to do spell work when I am feeling it, because when I do it, and, and like, I don't, it's usually halfway through the spell, I'll sometimes just peter out and be like, man, I knew that I didn't have this in me. And just yeah. kind of be like, well, it might do something. And it, yeah. but it doesn't have my full want, like, yeah. you know, your and full I noticed, attention. It didn't. Yeah, you know, and so but I, I notice in spells, when I do, I always feel like the switch flip there's always a moment of feeling like the tendril whatever my spirit tendrils are they burrow into what they need it's like i break through to where i need to break through yeah where the message gets who needs to hear it something it happens you know and there's a there's that, a moment of this the, oh we're here we're doing it i'm in yeah oh, I'm in. i got I'm it in. <laughs> like a hat and hacker. that's what it, i'm in we're in yeah it's what it, it's exactly what it feels like that you you break through into something and like and i that's another reason i like to do the candle and the smoke at the same time is that i feel like it really like rips a hole yeah. you know because like yeah. that's just a lot of power coming out and it's well, like boom do it at the same time anytime things can have that synergy like yeah, the same herbs on the candle i feel like yeah work with the same herbs that are burning and they like connect somewhere in the air and they just blast right through to spirit that's exactly how i feel and and i i felt it get through and in this moment of it getting through i was looking at this flame and i was just like getting this vision of like this person on a computer finding him and it was a it was a dude yeah like a guy and like a single, it was like I was like picturing like a single guy, yeah, and like on the computer, just getting his eyes on this listing, yeah. you know, finding Bruce, and it's like I stayed with that, and then eventually, it the switch like flipped again to where it was like, all right, son, you, you've done what you needed, to it, do. you know, yeah, and the candle like at that point was like on fucking fire which i was glad for like it was like a big quick burn like yeah. all right this is hasty and it was just like a blaze yeah. you know and i was you know it's one of those it's like all right cool and, you know kind of cleaned up after that after everything was done and i felt much better following that and it was like i had that calm peace of knowing like we're all this is about to happen something's yeah. gonna happen and then like the next day his listing was up and it was so cute. Like it was really good. It was like long and it explained, it was pretty, it was honest, explained it at it all and whatnot. And in like two days after the listing goes up, the, the founder of the rescue I'm working with calls me and was like, you need to see this app that we got. It's perfect. <laughs> like she was excited, you know? And so I pulled it up and it, it's him. It's the guy, yeah. you know, like it's the guy <laughs> in my mind. Like, I like to think is. I like to think that when you felt the that switch flip to like, okay, we've done what we needed to do somewhere in the world, that guy just sort of looked up and was like, I need, I need to start looking for a dog. Like yeah. it just completely called for him, you know? Well, when I got the other half of the story from him, it gets even weirder. <clears throat> so anyway, I read it. It's perfect. It's like, he's a, he's like a young guy. He is a, like a tennis and a spin coach and so he's active. A- He's a DJ, you know, (laughs) like he's just this really fun guy. And I call him up and he's super personable and, you know, he's got his own home and it's got this nice backyard with an Mm -hmm. eight foot privacy fence and he has no other dogs, no cats or anything. And he Mm -hmm. just wants a friend. He wants a buddy. He had a scruffy dog just like Bruce, but unfortunately didn't get, he didn't have him anymore. And uh, I was like a kind of like a separation situation, Mm -hmm. you know, and someone has to get the dog. And, um, so he, and so he had found Bruce's listing and was just like, I, and what he told me, and he's like, he meant it in a sweet way. And it made me laugh. He was like, and I just saw his stupid face. Yeah. And I, yeah. you know, and I was just like, all right. And so I, uh, 
Did you go, that was the plan? Well, and so he said, he was like, well, here's the thing. He was like, you know, I've been wanting a dog after all of this. And, you know, it felt like the right time. And I have this yard. And my friends keep saying, like, you have the this perfect house for a dog, dude. You need to get a dog. Mm-hmm. And he was like, so I, and I don't even really remember how he said that he met them. But he was just out and about. And he met this couple. And it just so happens that the woman of this couple is the woman I had been emailing about Bruce. She's the founder serious? of The Rescue. Oh, my yes. God. <laughs> and so... She says like, oh, well, you know, like we are this and that you can look us up like Mm. here you go. And he just happens to go up. And this is like literally, dude, like one or two days after his listing was up and he immediately sees Bruce, the scruffy dog that he'd been looking for, who looks exactly his stupid face. He looks exactly pretty much like the dog that he didn't get to have anymore. And he just like immediately threw an application on him. And the next day was like getting his home visited from the rescue to make sure it was perfect. (laughs) Like he was into it, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and so it was just like, I heard that it was just like, are you serious? You know, like that happened. Like he, he would have never seen all of those things had to happen for his eyes to get to Bruce. So he yeah. happened to meet this, this person who happened to direct him to the site that just so happened to have been right after his listing was up for the first time. And I like, I like the way that um, I like the way that you've approached talking about it. Like it, it, the work was to simply get this guy's eyes on Bruce. It wasn't like casting a love spell or, yeah. or, or like, no, you know, yeah. I didn't want that's, the yeah. will. I don't want to fuck with will. Right. You know, I want to just, just be like, the right person. I, yeah. I just somehow there's somebody out there that would be perfect. I need them to get their eyes on him. And and you know, what's crazy is like, I kind of thought that the way these things go, if you've ever been like, I'm going to look at dogs for rescue, there's just like a couple of sites or, you know, to go to sites, you know, to what to Google or whatever. And right. you'll look kind of, you'll scroll through, you know, the same couple ones. The fact that he wasn't already doing that. But, like, not only was he not, like, actively looking at these, like, rescue sites or whatever, but he, like, met the person for that one. It's just insanity. It, it's absolutely unreal. Like, seriously, like I, it, it really is incredible. And like, I stayed there for an hour just kind of visiting with him and had a cup of, he made me this bomb ass espresso. Nice. And like, we just kind of sat out and Bruce sniffed around. He was, and it was funny. He was being super, he knew something yeah. was up and it was, you know, like for instance, like in driving there and it was only that he's just in Dallas, but like in driving there it was only about an hour. Bruce got car sick. He's never been car sick before, oh. <laughs> you know? So it was like, it's like he knew something was up. You know, and so he was being real cautious and walking around. But then this guy's dad showed up. He was like doing some work on the house and Bruce ran up to him and hugged him like how he (laughs) does. Like, and then it was like after that, he snapped out of it. And then I noticed already waiting for him is a full basket of toys of all of these. And Bruce started like nosing around and all of those. And then by the time I left, like he was nuzzling this guy on the couch. Like they were just hanging together. (laughs) And I was just like, it's time for me to go, you know? Yeah. And, um, I, you know, since then I've gotten updates. He has slept in the bed because we had, we always had him sleep in his bed in his kennel. But like, no, he slept in the bed right up next to this guy. Nice. Like, he's rotten. He's rotten. <laughs> and, and that's exactly um, what he needed. He needed to be the spoiled only child. You know. I think. Yes, he he needed a person. Yeah. I mean, like this is exactly what I wanted. Yeah. It's exactly what I was hoping for and what I conjured, you know, what I manifested. And, and it's because it's so dead on, that's why I wanted to talk about it. And, and, and just kind of, again, this was a spell that I did in my mundane fashion. You know, it's not that I, you know, donned ritual garb and like tried to do this one any, it was because I did it from the heart. Like I did it with a true purpose, like a true mission. And I think that's the biggest part of it. Like, I don't always think like, and of course, experience comes into it with me with like not totally stepping on toes. You know, like that was me like holding that bottle of Hecate oil for 10 minutes. Yeah. Being like, Should I? Should I? Should, okay. I, don't Should know. I? Are, are you calling you know? me? Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's like, I think that's where experience can kind of play in to maybe ask those questions. But what this was at its core was my will. I shot my will, my want Your load. into the ether <clears throat> and I did it with such force and like with just the clear vision in my mind of what I wanted. And I think that's, that is what witchcraft is at, at its core is that it is using your sheer energy and your will to not necessarily change the fabric of reality, but direct it. I think. 
Exactly. 100%. I think that, you know, time is not linear and you can think of like all these, I think there are, there's every possibility stretched out in front of us. And I think that what this is, is, is you're giving a little nudge to the driver. You're slipping them, you know, you're slipping them a tasty cake going, Hey, take this next left, you know, to kind of end up where you want it to go. And it could very well have ended up there anyway. You're just kind of nudging the cart of destiny in the right direction, I think. Well, sure. And and I think a lot of it, too, is is giving what you get yeah. and making sure that you give and receive. Like, for instance, like since he wasn't really fostered by this rescue, like she, you know, the founder told me like, well, his adoption fee, we're just going to to give to you, you know, since all we, you know, and she was saying like, we didn't really do anything. And I was just listening to this like as preposterous. So I just told her like, I'm going to give it to you. Like, I want to yeah. donate his fee to y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. because like, I knew that was the way to close this. Like yes. that was how to close this loop you know, and make sure that like what's done right was done right everywhere. And I don't know, it's just all of this. And it was guided by intuition. It's like when I heard her say that, I was like, no, this goes to you. Like, I just knew that it did. It wasn't right for me to have it because none of this would have happened without her happening upon this person. You know, it's just not all these things had all these levers had to be pulled. And it was like, she was a huge part of that, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, um, I just think that's a big part too, just giving what you get and trying to, I I just, and remembering that we all have this ability in us, every single one of us. I I don't think that I'm special in any way. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that was something I was thinking. I forget what we were talking about earlier, but uh, we were talking about, I I think it was when we were talking about reaching into the fabric and, and it's like, it's not, it doesn't have to be this like, like you said, ritualistic thing. And and of course that has its place and its purpose. I don't want to like, diminish that at all but like it doesn't have to be viewed as like this you must be this all-powerful wizard you know it's like you can use the simplest tools and what you have which is like your body and your intent you know Mm -hmm. and and it's not like every time you have to like fucking part the skies or anything it, it, and there's not people who are born i mean i think there are people who are born who are more um adept at certain aspects of different things you know what i mean yeah. like you're you're always you gonna slip be, in a little easier than others yeah you know macy's always gonna be better at some things than i am and vice versa and that goes the same mm-hmm. for, for everyone on the planet you know what i mean so if you just have to find your niche or whatever but blah 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 but my point is i i, I get stuck sometimes in this like i'm not powerful enough i'm not a real witch kind of feeling you know what i mean and and i think that that's mm-hmm. you, know, you know what that is that's detritus oh it's just imposter syndrome i just love the word detritus well and you know here's the thing like i mine is diff like mine's kind of different like i always believe that I can do shit. I always like, it's, that's the ego. Like I don't ever have the ego problem, you know, to where it's like, I I believe in magic. I believe in magic wholeheartedly. And I Mm -hmm. believe that I can alter it because I've seen it happen. I don't ever really doubt that. It's just, I struggle with the, the complete like black and white ability to do so. Like if I don't have, if I don't have the charge, I'm not doing it. Yeah, And it's like, so that's where the thing is, is like, if I'm in a low, low spot, it's hard for me. It's not that I don't believe that I can do magic. It's that I don't believe that in that moment I can do magic. Yeah. It's the same as uh, like driving a car. Like you know how to drive a car, Yeah, but it's like right now I'm too tired to jump in and go to the store. It's like you have the ability, but not the desire, I guess, or the, you have the ability, but you just don't currently have the ability. I I, I don't know how to phrase it, but I get what you mean. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's the light that, you know, like the, the open sign is not lit up at that moment. Technically, technically I can, like it is possible, but man, I just can't. I just can't. can't. I can't, and it would be a waste of time. And yeah. if you go into spell work thinking it's oh, going to be God. a waste of time, it's a waste of time, at I least have, to me. I have done spells. I've done spell work before where when I was all wrapped up, I just immediately, I was like, that didn't fucking do anything. I was like, yeah. you know, I was like, that, that yes. didn't, you know, or um, that's not, it might be so, sort of impactful, but that's not going to be as impactful as I wanted it to be. And I know you could follow it with the argument of like, well, you have to speak things as if they have already happened and you have to be confident. And I do believe that there's a certain level of, of truth to that. Um, 
But at the same time, sometimes that thought is not a conscious effort. Sometimes it just crops up and you're like, I just know in my heart, I know in my gut that I did nothing just now. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and I think, I think that's like the, like the, I was like thinking about this this morning and I was like, I feel like for, for me, for spell work to work for like all of the cogs to line up and click into place. I was like, I need one. I need like, it's all based on like belief, Mm. but I need like belief in myself at that moment. Yeah. It's a big part. Like I can do it. And I need, um, belief in, in like, in magic, which I always have, like that box is usually checked. It's like, that's my, that's my study box. And I also need belief in a purpose. And it's like that I need all three of those to line up. Like I need to be willing and able to do the spell work. Mm -hmm. I need to believe that the spell work's going to do it. And then I need to have a true, real ass purpose Yeah, to do this. You know, it's like, it's when all three of those line up, that I, it's like, you you know, you get like, you know, see, you see like in movies, you know, to where it's like you have three lasers and then they shoot and it's like a triangle and then form one big laser, <laughs> yes. you know, it's like, that's what happens. And it's like when all three of those, like that Venn diagram or triple diagram, whatever the hell it's called when there's three circles instead of two, if it's even a different name. That's what I need. And I, I think that's when you can start really manipulating your existence in this mm-hmm. life. And, you know, deep down when it changes just like i mean it was like seriously the next the day or like the next day after that spell or might have been the day of i told hunter i said something's happening this week yeah so and it it was sunday and then i got a call on monday the next day and she was like we've got an application i was like you're goddamn right we do and hunter Hunter, well you said that was gonna happen (laughs) there you go you know and he's like i know it i heard it you know i'm like there you go but um So, yeah. And and again, I just want to touch on the closing, like, again, with like donating the fee, like that was another thing I was like, because I went into this calling on Hecate. And that was the conclusion. I was like, this money is going to go to helping more dogs. Yes, this is my offering. That's truly what it was. It was like, this is my offering to Hecate. And that's another thing. I do think it is important if you do work with deities to remember to offer them and pay it forward for them and show that extra effort of like, thank you. Mm -hmm. This is for you. And And that goes ties it up nice. I think that goes for any spirit whatsoever. Yes, you know, um, absolutely. Even if it's just the the human spirit of ancestor, like I, I think it's, you know, if you invite a bunch of friends over to paint your house, you're going to buy them some beer and pizza, you know? 100%. Like, <laughs> it's yes. just polite. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. And, and one thing that it keeps coming back to that I keep hearing you kind of say or the, the vibe I'm getting is just like, I have to tell myself, and I know a lot of people out there because y'all have written in and told us the same thing. If you feel like you're forcing something, stop. And yes. if you feel, if you feel that like, you know what I think would work right now? If you feel that vibe of that, that like that charge, follow that. Latch onto it. Yeah. Let it take you. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's the thing. This all happened from that tiny little, I can you know it was like a little bit of good news gave me a little bit of air under my wings Mm -hmm. and I was like I'm gonna take this and I'm Mm -hmm. gonna run with it and I didn't necessarily know at that moment that it was going to be this intense but as I rode that wave the wave grew and I was like this is fucking happening you know so it's just like if I would have ignored that I don't think the situation would be as it is right now I don't you really uh you follow the the string you know you pull the thread and And look what happened. And I'm so happy. I'm so glad that there was a positive uh, resolution to this because I I know that this was not a a great situation for anyone in the beginning. You know, it wasn't good for Bruce. It wasn't good for the other dogs. It was not good for you. You know, no, it it wasn't a good situation. But now it's good for everybody. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, I guess, honestly, you and Hunter are kind of the people who it is not turning out that well for because you ultimately you're losing a dog that you love very much. But yeah, I, that's where I am now is like, it's, and now I can heal, you know, cause I, I do things in, in order, you know, it was like, I, I had to get him rehomed. I had to get him to a safe space that was his. And now I'm processing that. And so that's kind of where I am. It's fine. It sucks, but it's positive. You know, it's just healing. Fucking happy. And it sounds like the dude that you left him with was perfect. And I think they're going to be like, Oh, they're bros. Just best of buds, dude. Yeah, no, there were, was, he had like a good sense of humor too. It was really cute. The guy's name is Ben. And, mm. and I was like, and I did tell him, I was like, he's used to his name. I don't think it could be changed. And he was like, no, nah, we're Ben and Bruce. It's like gin and juice. And I was like, all right, <laughs> we're Perfect. good. 
Love it. Yeah. Did you just grab your purse and like I? I was like, I'm gonna head out. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Oh man. Ah, oh, well, lovely. Well, I want to take this moment. I want to take this moment right now to just remind everyone. That wild chocolate is not safe for dogs. You know who it is safe and delicious for? My mouth. My mouth hole. <laughs> We're going to talk to you about today's sponsor of this episode. We're going to talk about Bright Moon's Apothecary and the Yule Chocolate Box that you can pick up right now. There are no two words that go better together than Yule and Chocolate. No. Oh, Oh, so the Yule chocolate box is $25. That includes shipping and holds eight chocolates, two of each flavor, and the special Couture Cocoa Blend shells. Listen to these flavors. Are you ready, Macy? Yes. Orange cream. Mm. Mint ice cream. Mm. Orange truffle. Mm. And cinnamon apple pie. There it is. And listen, these you've we these chocolates are delicious. I we have had Beltane and Sauen chocolates from Bright Moon's Apothecary, uh, very politely sent to us, and we have moaned our way through all of them. It's so funny. I remember being in your kitchen and we would like pop the same chocolate in our mouth and we would just do that thing where you make eye contact and you just go, oh at yeah, each other. Yeah, and you'll just like take a good <laughs> intake of just Oh, God. <laughs> and along with that, there's other goodies that you can pick up. So there is Florida water, which I have put in my baths, and Ugh. it is super lit. And roll-on perfumes, which I also have been using the ever-loving life out of. <laughs> Mine is like kind of a nice, like, woodsy mm. kind of and it's in this beautiful two-tone little roll-on glass bottle and uh all 100 essential oils uh with witch hazel and carrier oils as mm. uh, some some coconut oil sesame seed oil grape seed oil almond oil wheat germ oil some sunflower seed oil olive oil all the good and i gotta tell you like you know how they roll on like they roll on generously yes i love that's that what i like with i hate on. a stingy roll on first yeah, of all yeah no it like comes out and then yeah, you can rub yeah. it in and it's nice and oily and it just yeah. has a good scent so all of these oils dude it sounds uh super nourishing for your skin and like you said it is essential oils oil carrier oils witch hazel all this good stuff it, it, it means it's real not like synthetic or chemically chemical right yep and the uh, the Florida water and the roll-on perfumes, those are all $7 each. And it keeps going because also with Bright Moon's Apothecary, you can build custom grimoires or books of sh or book of shadows. Uh, you can customize your page count style, cover, uh, tea-stained pages. These are like book binding, actual books uh, and bookmarks with made of ribbon and anything else you can think of. Handmade assembled books of shadows. Tea-stained paper is one of my favorite things. It's a simple pleasure. That, that makes me so happy in my heart. Uh, I love tea stained pages. I, I don't know why. It's oh, one absolutely. of those things. It's, it's a job well done. It's, it's a job touch. well done. And also, this is a personal favorite here. Uh, they also have hot cocoa kits because who doesn't love a hot cocoa tick? A hot cocoa tick. A hot cocoa <laughs> kit. They have milk, I know it, dude. <laughs> milk chocolate and listen here, Mexican chocolate. I so, am a fan I, of some spice in my hot cocoa. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, so all of this is at Bright Moon's Apothe Apothecary. You can message them directly uh, for orders, and that is at their Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash bright.moon.com dot or bright dot moons dot apothecary we will link this in the show notes check them out and uh hit them up for an order they're also a very very long time listener of the show so help out a fellow bean and their uh their business dude beans helping beans my bro beans helping beans very helpful pot of beans mace wad i'm going to talk to you about a stone that very much caught my my heart today oh uh, it is a quick, a quickie, a little quickie, because like you said, we are on a bit of a time restraint. However, it normally just sort of worked out that way. This is a very concise little stone. And I'm talking to you about sunstone. Cute. I know. So sunstone, if you've never seen it, it's 
gorgeous. It has um, that kind of interesting, it has, it's one of the stones that has an interesting look to it, you know, like tiger's eye or any, mm-hmm. any of the ones that just have a look to it. And that's because this is actually in the, um, the feldspar family. So like satin spar, AKA selenite, it has that kind of shard look to it. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's, I, I didn't see many in the like long, square like wand style that you can find selenite in typically these are more of a what you would think of when you think of a stone like it's a little a chunk a little nugget uh but it is that feldspar so it has that interesting look to it Uh, it's also known as aventurine feldspar because it has it has a, 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 a similar look to a venturine as well. You know how it has that, I don't want to say shard again, but it has that um, striated look, I guess. Yeah, and it also kind of has the same like waxy candy look yeah, yeah, when yeah. it's raw. You know what it looks like? It reminds me of the orange cream savers. I was thinking of uh, Whorehound, but like the the unpolished version of, of um, Sunstone. Not where it's like real shiny, but you know how Whorehound has like that powder coating sort of on it? That's what it looks Whorehound, like. Whorehound. Whorehound candies. I'm so sorry. Okay. I was yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So it's also known as uh, Aventurine Feldspar. And I have to actively say Aventurine. You, you, I know that's like a thing here. But I cannot stop myself from saying adventuring. I know. Is, it's what I want. It's so much better. It should, let's yeah. just change it. Petition to change the name of adventuring. <laughs> <to adventuring. laughs> it's also known as heliolite. Um, so sometimes it is sold under the name of heliolite. But we're basically talking sunstone here. It is a gorgeous, like, orangey color like what, what did you just it. say i know it looks edible looks delicious what did you just say it looks like the orange candies what candy yeah the uh, cream savers yeah yeah cream savers ew cream savers sounds like an insult that you'd give somebody but they were delicious they slap dude so um the reason it has this beautiful gold coloring is because of the amount of copper within it so the copper gives it not only this coppery orangey look but it also gives it that striated or that interesting look that it holds Mm. so sunstone's only in the grand scheme of things pretty recently popular this doesn't have a, a hugely enriched past where people have you know built civilizations off of it or it had any kind of huge meaning in any culture there there are a few uh i believe it was the norse sailors used it as a way to navigate the seas uh because of the way that the stone would catch light they could tell they could like somehow navigate the the light would hit the stone and the way that the light reflected they would basically use that as like a, a clock of of some form or a cool. um a compass or or you know they would they would somehow be, so much cooler i know dude i don't even my brain my stupid We're so useless. Brain does not understand how you would do that but there would be people who could just th- that was their thing that was like their whole job you know as navigators they would have these big chunks of stone and you would somehow figure it out like oh so the light is casting at a 45 degree angle that means we're going You know, it's also, it's afternoon, so that means we're going north. I I, I don't know. And we just always say, everybody just resorts to the fact that, like, our ancestors and, like, indigenous peoples that figured all of this out are just, are stupid. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. or And it's not even that they're, like, stupid, like, you know, I'm stupid. But it's like... We, we think of them as so incredibly simple, I guess. Yeah, like primitive, Yeah, you know? And it's, and it's like, like, no, dude, man. <laughs> we are, like, yeah, we... we we have these phones and shit. We can look down and like ultimately see which way we're going like compass style. But the thing is, is in our advancement, we have somehow become simple, you know? And exactly. You know, we're spoon fed everything that yeah. we need to know. We don't which retain it. It's fine. It's not like, important for survival. I, I'm not, um, I'm not by any means like saying, let's go back to the old ways, dude, where you could die if you stubbed your toe. Right. You know, I'm not saying. But let that. us respect the old ways. Yes. Let us respect the old ways and let us maybe just maybe learn a couple of these skills, you know, absolutely. It, 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 it's not until you lose your phone or you, you lose power 
or something that you go, oh, fuck, I should have really paid attention. How do you how do you make sure water is clean to drink? You know, like, right. So just to kind of um, get up on my survivalist soapbox a little bit. (laughs) Okay, so speaking on the history, this comes from geology.com. And it just makes me giggle. It's a little bit of history, but it's also kind of funny. So geology.com says uh, the United States, the common use of sunstone in the United States, the common use of sunstone by uh, lapidaries. um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it is like uh, jewelry, you know, to make jewelry and decorative pieces. Mm -hmm. It began in the early 1900s. So pretty recent, guys. Uh, And at that time, Tiffany's Tiffany and Company, they acquired the mining claims of uh, one of the largest places to get this from, which is in Oregon. They uh, they opened the first commercial sunstone mine in the United States, and they produced the jewelry with the faceted sunstone, uh, and they called them plush diamonds, was the name that they oh. put under. Plush diamonds. And this is the part that makes me giggle, because in this article they say, their efforts with sunstone must not have met Tiffany's expectations because they stopped production and sold their claims. <laughs> Oh, shit. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Which is um, strange to me. That must have truly been a byproduct of what was popular at the time uh, because the stone is gorgeous. I would I would love a piece of jewelry made out of sunstone. It it is just so pretty to me. And this is coming from somebody who does. I don't typically love the orange yellow those kind of stones like the bright stones i definitely pull towards like your 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 deep blues and your dark stones and stuff and shit like that but this one has absolutely stolen my heart um so yeah, this one and citrine those seem to be your exceptions i do yeah i and, and i really do love tr- uh, citrine and I, i'm finding that when i do like these types of stones it's, it's very solar based and mm-hmm. it instills in me this feeling of not only, hey, is this pretty, but it instills this feeling of warmth. And that's something that not only sun, uh, sorry, not only citrine has, but sunstone as well. They they bring the warmth of the actual sun. So I know we spoke mm-hmm. about um, citrine a million years ago. And besides it being a rock star for prosperity or whatever the fuck. Yeah, um, it's holds it was thought to hold the actual power of the sun so same with this guy here now it doesn't have a immensely huge um history in that way now there were uh certain indigenous people of uh america as well as i want to say it was south africa yeah south africa as well that do have a we have some evidence that they um used it as one of the like representations of sun and and things like that. It, it just wasn't very well known. There were other things that they would use probably first, or we have evidence to suggest, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. However, um, it in modern day witchcraft practices, it is used to represent the sun. So it is tied to the things that you think it would be tied to. It, it is a, a Leo stone, and I'm not doing this on purpose. I feel like every stone I talk about is either Leo or Aquarius. <laughs> like I, I, it just it just be like that. It just happens, you know. <laughs> um, it, so you know, Leo, uh, the planet would be the association would be the sun. It's very tied to fire, but also because it is a stone, Earth as well. Um, and I even saw some evidence. Or some evidence. I saw some people use it for uh, Aries, you know, as well, um, mm. because of just the 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 fire and the the passion. Passion is big with this stone. Um, not only of course, you know, not only a sexual passion, but passion for your interests. Anything, it, it just carries such strong sun vibes. Think of the sun burning and churning, and it's just mm-hmm. so fucking pumped all the time. It is. Like, it wants to see your butthole. Just, it does. It wants to see your butthole, and so does sunstone. Um, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe it doesn't. Put it up your butt. Uh, yeah. Hey. Um, so it can help you inspire passion, uh, find passion where passion has been lacking. So say as an example, you have this hobby that you have loved forever. And recently you're just feeling, maybe you're, you're having a bit of the, um, seasonal affective disorder, you know, you're having the, the winter time blues, or maybe, you know what, maybe it's straight up fucking depression, right? Like that fucks with your want 
to do the things that you oh, love. That's where I've been for weeks. Yeah. Now. Like, yeah. I, I mean, you know, like full on, like I had, I had the, the, you know, the come to moment of when you're like, oh shit, I'm depressed. Yes. You know, like it was about like a week, like three weeks in when I realized like I had just basically stopped. Exi- I, like, at, by the way, if you've emailed us in like the past while, <laughs> I'm going to answer it probably this week. <laughs> I'm just, I've just stopped. Like I put my whole purpose into no, I, this one thing, yeah. you know, and it's like outside of that, like I've just kind of been a gray shade, you know? And, and I think that when people are affected by seasonal, um, you, you know, I, I, I don't just love saying seasonal depression because I think that that implies that the other parts of depression aren't, I mean, I mean, there, there's like seasonal anxiety, you know, there's, there's, yeah. you know, but a seasonal. Yeah. And, and the disorder. seasonal, the sad hasn't yes. um, hit me yet. Like this was mainly because okay. of the dog situation, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. usually start getting hit. Well, it, but it's going to be different though, dude. Cause we're about to, our greenhouse is like got the top layer of plastic mm-hmm. on it. Like mm-hmm. in the next like week, I'm going to have a sealed off huge greenhouse where it's like i think that's gonna i can work with my plants in yeah. january i can see you just hanging out in that greenhouse just chilling. i'm going to oh yeah keep me alive i know you will i know it will and the reason okay so the reason i was focusing so much on the sad is because this stone is um recommended for people who work with stones to help alleviate sy- symptoms of of sad or seasonal affective or uh um uh, seasonal depression, you know, however, you know, you want to, uh, it, it, it is the literal sun in your back pocket. It brings you physical warmth. It helps to bring the, um, vitality and the passion back to, to projects. And frankly, it can, it can, how do I say it can bring the warm fuzzies that come this time of year, but frankly, don't come for everybody, you know? Um, yeah. It, it, this is, I'm sorry, I'm kind of, I'm kind of stuttering a little bit because this is a hard topic to talk about. You know, I, I personally do not get affected by wintertime um, seasonal depression or anything like that. My, mine is much more uh, like in summer and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you definitely do in the summer. Oh, big time. And, uh, but this, this is not that for me right now. This is my time of year. I, I very much love Yule. Um, I love the colors. I love the representation of it. The the more that I've learned about Yule and about this paganism and blah, 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 the more that I'm like, oh, dude, I've always loved Christmas, but I'm not a Christian. So where's my place in that? And I've always kind of, yeah, I've, I've wondered about it. And then the more I learn about it, I'm like, dude, I fucking am a simp for Yule, you know? Um, (laughs) But (laughs) and, and it does very much bring that most wonderful time of the year vibe but i know that that is not the case for so many people and and that really really fucking sucks and especially when you are surrounded okay so in summer i am so depressed and i hate everything and when people are like jazzed about summer like yeah it's finally summer i can't wait for it to be summer again or oh i'm a summer baby and people are just so happy that it's summer like yeah i'm glad that you're happy but it it makes me feel like shit you know what I mean? It makes me feel like shit. And so I know what it must feel like to be surrounded by all of this Christmas uh, propaganda. <laughs> of just, Honestly, like, I, yeah, I yeah. can't stand it. And you walk into a store and big red letters, it says joy, you know, and it's like, yeah. what if you're not fucking joyful right now? What if what if you literally feel as if you don't want to be here anymore? You know what I mean? And, yeah. and it's like to be surrounded by such levels of be happy, be happy, be happy. It's like, Ooh, fuck off. It's Um, irritating. Yeah. Yeah. Irritating to say the least. So anyway, sunstone brings joy and passion and warmth into the life. Um, It's also wonderful to bring about confidence. Think about the sun. Not only is it burning and churning and, 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 you know, whatever, it's very proud of itself. Um, It is. It will melt you. He's a proud little boy. So this is good for confidence. Um, And of course, you could use it in a specialized way, like confidence, if you have to do a business production or or whatever. But it's also good if you're just working on your everyday self-confidence. If if it takes a lot for you to kind of walk into a room with your head held high, bring some of this with you, you know, to kind of have, I can't think of another way to put it, have that bitch energy in your pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, also, I saw that. Uh, wait, hold on. Blah 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 blah, blah 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 blah. Okay, so in line with the confidence building, uh, sunstone absolutely it burns away fear and doubt. It eliminates fear and doubt. 
Mm -hmm. Um, It it does. It kind of, it targets those things and it just blasts it with its little summaries. And it just, get out of here, fear and doubt, go on. It sounds really appropriate uh, for performers. Yes, yeah, yeah. It'll give you the confidence and you'll shine, you know, you'll shine. have like that exactly. magnetism. Yeah. And um it, it's it, it removes the the ceiling of what you think you're capable of, basically. It will help promote an atmosphere of there is no limit to what I can do and what I'm capable of. And you're right. I think that you're like if if you're a stage performer or a performer in any sense, really, mm-hmm. that's important. Because to me, what is imposter syndrome but a self-imposed limit. You know what I mean? That True. like you feel like you've exceeded it and you're like, oh, I can't, I don't know about that. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's the ultimate happy stone. It's just, a, it's, it's a happy little dude. I can imagine if you paired it with Citrine, you're going to just blast off into stardom. You will become the sun itself. Um, you will. Yeah, have- I feel like those two together are like Riley and Jonesy from Letter Kenny. Like they're oh, just Lord. like two bros, just two brothers. <laughs> um just that's the name just two brothers brothers. and um it's cute to imagine yeah yeah and also cute is the um along with all of these happy vibes and confident vibes it's also nice to just bring the warm like the warmness um it it has cat nap in the sun energy oh dude have you ever just put your hand on a warm cat like a sun warmed cat oh baby have you ever just it's so hot you ever just fallen asleep in a ray of sunshine absolutely it's like the only i've learned the only way i can nap i've napped twice or three times this year and i think all three times have been outside in the sun sun. oh it's so good it is so good i mean coming from somebody who just abhors the sun um Mm -hmm. uh, just that gentle heat especially if it's Mm -hmm. cold outside like just cold enough oh baby um (laughs) okay and Moving swiftly on, back to, I kind of want to wrap it up, bring it full circle, with the aspect of sexual vitality cannot be overlooked within this stone. Um, mm. I, I feel like that is a energy that it carries that is specific to Sun Stone that really separates it from um, from um, Citrine. So if that is an aspect that you're looking for, you know, get you some strange or some film familiar whatever you're looking for it'll and, give you like some it'll give you like a spiritual simmy <laughs> my spirit is jubbed um and then you can also i want to end with this um I want to end with, uh, if you're looking to promote balance in your life, uh, maybe it's work-life balance, or maybe it's the balance of, you know what, I seem disproportionately sad to the times that I'm happy. It just If you mm. are looking to promote balance, keep some sunstone on you, but pair it with moonstone to promote balance in all things. I like so, that. What is sunstone? A cute. I happy. Like it quite a bit. Very happy. Yeah. Very, very warm feeling. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I could go for that. Yeah. I like how it looks. I could go for a good chunky like bangle, like a good oh, chunky, you know, with like, yeah. you know, like a good stone bracelet, not tumbled. Like I want it. I want it raw. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> raw and wriggling. Mm. <laughs> wriggling. Uh, you know, a song that I have had in my head. And mm. I don't think I'm saying the words right, but if I am saying the word right, it, it's it's um, concerning to me. You know, it's like I'm a I'm about to make what is it? I want to try to make love to you, so get ready, so get ready. Uh, yeah, who is that, um... the, is that the is that the words? I'm gonna try to make love to you, so get ready. I I don't know for sure. I that sounds right to me, and oh. I mean. Maybe I'm about to try to make love to you. So get ready. <laughs> you get get ready. Get ready. <laughs> Buckle up. I um maybe maybe they could use a little bit of sunstone. Maybe they're just a little nervous. Yeah, That's yeah. they're just gonna try and right. give them some sunstone. Put it up. Put it up their butt, Pop and it'll be butt. fine. Yeah. <laughs> don't put it up the butt. Don't, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Formal. Uh, formal. Whatever. Don't, so don't, please, <laughs> please don't put it up your butt. One thing I do want to <laughs> say here is um. I, I just now Googled Sunstone just to kind of get the picture of it. And I, I was also going to look for a chunky bangle. But one thing that we both come across, and I don't know if we've talked about it yet, but I know you have to have had experienced this. When we do research for stones, 
I come across a fair amount of Steven Universe stuff because the characters in Steven Universe are, you know, named after stones and crystals, right? So yeah, I keep getting told by multiple people to watch that show. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've heard yeah. that as well. And the more that I kind of see that they are accurate with the description like the characters that are called by these names mm -hmm. have the properties that these stone have well that's and good i think it would be fun to to kind of to see these things per personified i know that's not really the point of the show however i just now saw um while looking through it there there's a character named sunstone and boy does she look like she could crush my head with her thighs oh i'm gonna look her up look up look her up steven universe sunstone she's got four arms and her head is fire. Her head is fire. Where's sun? Stone. Dude, she looks like she could kill me. Oh, yes, yeah, she could. She's hot. Look at her. Sunstone. All right. I love her. I love her. She's my new favorite. Big fucking arms. Okay, that's it. That's all I have for you. <laughs> is... All right. Well, cool. I then am going to go... Oh, let's go ahead and say, everybody, if you're still here don't know yeah. why you are we are gonna be at the big ass giant fucking yeah. tucson gym sh gyms yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah yeah gym show shit uh <laughs> at, jim in, heard his name and he came in and he he, he did up god <laughs> you fumbled my tongue around with <laughs> fingers stuck, stuck um go right in your mouth and just kind of just right in there and just wiggling yeah, yeah, around yeah. so i couldn't speak <laughs> um we're going to be there and yes. I can't wait. We're going to spend several days there. We're going to cover what goes on at this event that is yes. huge. And we're going to see all the rough and raw stones. We're going to see all of the pretty ones that oh we can't God. afford and oh. could never dream to. Oh. Uh, the ones I'm they won't slip. let you touch. No, they won't even let you hardly look at. Oh. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to slip inside some giant, giant, giant stones and yes. just sit there for a while. I'm going to find myself like a big geode and I'm going to pass away in it and make it my coffin. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll, we'll, I'll just ship you back in that. Just throw me in the river like Osiris. Okay. Yes. Okay. We'll find the other half of the geode and seal it. Yes. With you inside. And then I can and you'll be eternal. And you'll be eaten off by a fish. Absolutely. And no one's ever going to find it. Yeah. Well, except my wife, who will blow me but, back to life. That's true. Yes. Yeah. This is a bad bitch, though. <laughs> oh, can we, dude... Okay, listen, I can't, we can't. Okay, back to the gym show topic at hand. I have heard about this gym show for years and years and years. Yeah. Particularly from Kim. We've wanted to go We've for wanted years, to and go. years and years. But the thing is, I had no idea of the scale of this. Me thing. neither. I thought Me it would be neither. like, what, like, like, um, like a parking lot full of people who had their different gyms. It's a whole town. The whole town. It's the whole city. Town. Yeah. Holy God. So, um, yeah. If you're going, please let us know and we would love to maybe say hi. And, you know, we're going to we're going to be out and kind of kicking rocks, as it were. Yeah, we are. We got a queef. We got a little, little queef. cute little. I know I said queef. <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a little queef. We've got a cute little Airbnb uh, and we're going to be kind of right in the middle of it all. And I yes. can't wait. I can't wait to drive through the desert. We're going to do me and you, man, road trip through the desert. How yes, fucking yes, cool yes, is that? Yes. So, Oh, my God. How cool are we? I've always wanted to do that. I, me too. And yes. I can't wait. So that's the plan. So maybe more news to come on that. Probably so as it gets closer. But anyway, if y'all are in that area and you're coming to the gym show, hit us up and maybe we can hang party yeah, uh, more news i think this uh this is this is the last announcement that i have next week is our big spooky time christmas episode well not big it's it's usually a just a uh, it's, it's a quick quick and dirty christmas spooky zone next yeah week. join us spooky chode spooky chode for scary ghost stories and something i don't know the other words and da 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 That's how that and the week after that the following week we have a very special treat for the last episode of this year, 2020. Uh, we're having no, Amber. No. Oh, did I say 2020? 2021. <laughs> Listen, 2021 really didn't exist, in my no, opinion. No, it didn't, dude. It didn't. It, it's gone and nothing really ha I mean, a lot happened, but at the same time, it's just kind of like gone somehow. It, it, was, um, it was the most that happened year that has ever Absolutely. Happened. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we're having Amber from Amber Energy Services back on the show, and we're going to talk 
astrology again, and we're going to talk about what it's looking like in the coming year. Yeah. Uh, and I can't wait for that. Oh, so it's yeah. going to be kind of an end of the year wrap up astrology episode and what's to come. And she's so knowledgeable on this. We can't wait to have her on again mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of talk about what 2022 is looking like. Yes. And and um, that is something that I'm very uh, excited for because I've never thought to, of course, we're not we're, we're both novices at the astrology thing. We're learning more every day. Uh, but I've never really thought to look to the skies to see how the upcoming year is going to be. And I, I really am excited to get it on record and to kind of, um, it, it'll be one of those things where you, we can look back on it and, and see like where certain things came into play for us. Yeah. Um, kind of in the way that at the very end of 2019, we had an episode where we were talking about like how great 2020 was going to be and we couldn't wait for 2020. Oh, I know it. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. We were so young. Now that's, now that's a sad looking back, but with it this, is. It'll, be, it'll be an interesting, like, um, so I, I'm certain she's going to say certain things that we go, oh, that's cool. But like later we look back and we're like, whoa, that was, oh, more shit. Than, that was more than cool. We should have listened, you know? Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> and, um, and this, and so I'm, I'm excited to see how this works. Of course, she knows more than us. She might come on and be like, no, you, we're, no, we can't just predict the future. Yeah, yeah, she's like, no, you moron. I'm, I can tell you <laughs> like, what your week is going to be like as an Aquarius, but you, but, you moron. I know, but I believe in her. And uh, she's also way nicer to us than that. Oh, God, and yeah. I can't wait to have her on again. So y'all look forward to that. It'll be a really fun way to just pop off this year and roll into <laughs> the next pop it right off yes just just headshot this year yes, just <laughs> right there right between the eyes Goodbye. yeah quick and dirty it's all right <laughs> um <laughs> but uh yeah we'll see y'all next week with some spooky tales all right uh -huh.